Hello and welcome to your marketing MOT. Why your business needs a marketing MOT? Because let's face it, we all need um, to address our marketing worries every now and then. We need to look under the bonnet, make sure that everything is working properly and take the opportunity to fine tune the things that we're doing for our businesses. So my name is Joanne Dolezal and for the next 30-40 minutes I'll be taking you through an overview of a new ebook that we've created for you and a webinar program that we hope will help you to get the very, very best out of your business marketing. So the agenda for today's webinar is an introduction to the marketing MOT, the ideas behind it and how it's come about. We'll look at top five marketing worries that are common to all businesses, all charities, large and small. We'll have a look at the, the things that you need to know and the things you need to know now. And we'll, we'll kick off a, a look at the various areas of your business marketing that you're going to want to review in the next few weeks and then what you can expect from our future webinars. Finally, there's a little bit of homework, but I'm hoping it's something that you'll really enjoy and that will give you a real sense of achievement for the year that's been. Okay, so why do you need a marketing MOT? Well, from time to time, it's important to step back from what you're doing in your business, whether it's finance, whether it's business development, whether it's product development, service delivery, whatever it is that you're doing, and just maybe have a look and see what's working, what isn't working, investigate some of the, the funny noises that are coming from underneath the bonnet. The other reason why you need to review your marketing from time to time is that resources are always finite in any business, large or small. So you're always going to be facing the challenge of um, limited resources and then the great list of things that you'd really like to be doing. So we're talking marketing about the five M's. So that's money, minutes, manpower, materials and machinery. But those equate quite nicely to um, five resources time. Um, so your time is always limited. There are only 24 hours in the day, seven days a week. And the number of people I've spoken to over the years who would only do more marketing if they had more time. Finding time for marketing is a big challenge for many, many businesses, even really big businesses. Money is often in short supply. Sometimes it's fine. Sometimes the cash flow is really healthy. Other times money's too tight to mention. And often that's what holds us back from making the investments that we want to make. It, it holds us back from growing our businesses and charities in the way that we want to. People will be in short supply. Their hours, their working hours, their skills as well and experience may be in short supply. You may be finding it hard to find the right people for your business, to find the right skills for your business, and this can really hold you back at times. Um, you may find that you yourself need to develop. You need to develop your skills. You maybe need to train in a new area. So these are going to sometimes be barriers that hold you back. Equipment or capital investment or premises, offices, vans, machinery, all those things will require a big investment and maybe things that you have to think long and hard before you do them. And then finally, materials. So if you're actually making a product, then you'll have raw materials. But if, like me, you're, you're using your brain, you're using your head for a lot of what you do, materials for you might be intangible. It might be research projects, or it might be um, pieces of industry data, or a really important piece of um, research that's come out that helps you to uh, make decisions for your business in the future. So these are the five M's, always in short supply, and it's always a balancing act, isn't it, if you're, if you're trying to get things done. So over the years, we've worked with many, many businesses, large and small. We've worked with many charities, we've worked with public sector organisations, and in my work as a teacher for the Chartered Institute of Marketing and the Digital Marketing Institute, I have the pleasure of sitting in the room with marketers every week. And these, com these concerns, these worries are common to all of us. So what we did at the beginning of 2016 was we did a bit of a review of the common reasons that the clients come to us, the common challenges that our customers are facing or have faced. 
and we came up with a top five. Some of these may not relate to you, um, some of these may be very top of mind for you at the moment, but most businesses, most organisations are going to face these at some time or another. And it's what do you do about that? How do you manage around that? So top of the pops is we don't have enough of the right customers. And I've added the word right customers in there, but sometimes it's we don't have enough customers full stop. But as, as a business develops or as an organization grows, you start to get a sense of who the best customers are for you, what the best fit is for your products and services, who is going to really appreciate you, who's going to pay you what you're worth, and who's going to stick around, who will be loyal to you. So we don't have enough of the right customers. We're not making enough money. Cash flow can be a big problem for businesses, large and small. And even really, really big businesses go out of business because of cash flow problems. Um, I worked for many years in the travel industry and every year there will be a big travel company that goes bust and it's because of cash flow. They have to pay out uh, well in advance of receiving final payments from customers and it, it can just strangle your business. So if you're not making enough money, that might be holding you back from areas that you want to develop for your business. Um, it could be holding you back from taking on more people. Um, the third biggest concern people have is that something has changed in their marketplace or something has changed in the world around their business. Sometimes they're aware of what it is. It could be um, drop in the price of crude oil. It could be a massive change in the exchange rate. It could be a really tricky piece of legislation that's come along. Um, it could be a competitor who's doing really well. They're taking customers and market share away from you. So something's changed. And often you need to spend a bit of time, not just investigating the obvious stuff, but digging a bit deeper to see what else is going on behind the scenes and to see what you can do to safeguard your business future. Fourthly, we don't know what we should be investing in. And that's often a challenge for businesses that maybe haven't done a lot of planning in the past. They haven't kept tabs on what they have been doing. Um, they don't have a clear strategy for the future, so they don't know what's really going to help them to achieve their goals. Um, so let's face it, there are so many things that we would spend our money on for our businesses if we could, but you know we have to make choices. So that's often a big challenge. We don't know what we should be investing in. And then finally, and this is common to all businesses at some stage, that they, they don't have a plan, let alone a strategy. So you may not have a business strategy, you may not have a business plan. Chances are, therefore, you won't have a marketing plan. And um, I'm a great believer in the old adage that, you know, fail to plan, plan to fail. And clients who plan achieve most of what they plan to do. They achieve most of it. Some of them smash through it and achieve a lot more, but they do at least achieve most of what they plan to do. Um, so we'll talk about that in more detail. So what you need to know now. Okay, so something's changed in our marketplace and we don't really know what or why. So this is where you need to be looking at where you are now. And in our first webinar, Competitor Analysis and Marketing Environments, on the 13th of January, we'll be taking a look at the, the three marketing environments. So your internal environment is the business that you manage, everything that's under your control. We'll be thinking about the macro environment, which is the furthest away from you. It's um, the big wide world around your business. So it might be changes in law, economic trends, it could be technology, um, the economy. It could even be the, the, the society that you live in, um, that your customers live in. And changes going on there can have a surprising impact on your business. And then we'll look a little bit closer to home at your microenvironment. So taking a close look at those customers or clients or service users, depending on where you're working. We'll have a think about um, supplier relationships. A supplier is really powerful and in short supply in your sector. Or do you call the shots? You know, sometimes there's an interesting power balance between businesses and their suppliers. 
in my own experience, they've often been an excellent source of advice and information about what's going on in the bigger business world around me. Um, then we'll also have a look at your intermediaries, your other routes to market, because sometimes it's bridges and tunnels. Sometimes there's more than one way to get your products or services in front of a customer. So take a closer look at those things. Most importantly, next session, we're going to have a really close look at competitors, how to bring them down to size, how to analyze them coolly, dispassionately, see where their real strengths and weaknesses lie and think about how you're going to position your business or your organization so that you compete well. Another thing you may need to know is that you need new products, but you need new customers for your products or services, but you don't know where to find them and you, you certainly don't know how to reach them. Well, this is um, where we might use something like the ANSOF growth matrix. And it's really just a framework to start to help you to think about this. It's where do your customers lie? Where are they? What are you producing or creating for them at the moment? So ANSOF was a mathematician, but he was also um, a business thinker. And he created this matrix back in the 1930s to help businesses to understand the relative risks involved in various directions in their business strategy. If you want the lowest risk, the easiest thing to do is going to be market penetration. You're going to sell more of what you already do to the same kind of customers and clients that you have at the moment. This might just be as simple as getting a bit busier with your marketing and communications, doing stuff more regularly, showing up more regularly, and going back to past customers and clients who love what you do, they just didn't know you were still around. The next area that you might decide to go in is um, you're going to keep your product and service range, but you're going to look for a new type of customer. That might be overseas, it might be in a different part of the country to the one that you live in, or it could be in another sector or another industry. So you might have served um, the public sector for a long time, you might decide that you're going to go over to the service sector. Product development is also a medium risk strategy. So you're going to keep looking at what your current customers and clients need. You're going to develop new products and services for them. It's a very good way of extending your product range. It's a medium risk strategy. It will require some research, require some talking and listening and finding out what's going on, what the trends are, perhaps even looking at what your competitors are doing and, and trying to do something that's going to be better than them. Finally, diversification, where you're going to sell new products to new customers. Now, this is often where startups lie, startup businesses, and I've worked with a number of tech startups over the years. They've been an absolute delight to work with and really innovative. However, if customers can't get what you do and can't get why they need it, you have a lot of hard work to do convincing them. So this is one of the things I'll take you through in much more detail in our third webinar. How do you improve turnover? Well, how do you improve profit or cash flow? Well, there's an old adage, isn't there, that turnover is vanity, profit is sanity, but cash is reality. And there are lots of businesses that look really great on paper, but once you take a closer look, they're in real trouble. Remember, the profit margins are really tiny. For example, a lot of retailers go out of business or they have a tough time because their margins are tiny. Retail margins might be as little as 8 or 9%. As I mentioned earlier, travel businesses regularly go bust because of cash flow issues. But turnover is something that you always want to be looking to grow. And even if you're in a tricky market or you're in a tricky economy, there's recession or things like that, maintaining turnover and becoming more cost efficient, more profitable, is a strategy that you can always look at following. So in our fourth webinar, we're going to look at not just how to manage the marketing communication side around getting business in, getting customers in, but also look at how you communicate with your customers to make sure that you manage cash flow clearly. 
And most importantly, we're going to have a look at pricing strategies. There are so many different ways of pricing what you do um, to different stages in the customer journey, or if it's a very new product or service, perhaps it's a premium priced object or pre premium price service. But we'll also look at ways to work out if you're actually charging enough. And this is a common concern with clients, whether they are producers or the service providers. They're often not charging enough for what they do. They're not confident about the value of what they deliver and therefore they're, they're nervous to charge too much for it. So we'll look at those in our fourth webinar. So should we buy this possibly expensive advertising campaign, new website, piece of software, new service like consulting, etc., etc. These are difficult decisions to make. They're always difficult decisions to make because um, largely you won't have more money than you know what to do with. And if you do have that, then it's a very nice problem. So this is where you might want to be looking back as well as forward. So strategy is about taking you towards a, a distant future, a, a brighter future for your business or organization. But I think sometimes it's really important to take time to reflect. And as we come to the end of one year and the beginning of another, it's a time to look back at the year that's been, or maybe the past 18 months, and start to construct your have done list. So things that you might want to include in there would be marketing activity that you've undertaken, business development, sales campaigns. You might have commissioned a new website. You might have started using social media. You might have started using content marketing. You might be doing more physical marketing like networking or trade shows, exhibitions, public speaking. Because not only will you have engaged in a lot of activity, you've probably created what we would call marketing collateral in that time. And um, you know, it's probably quite a lot to be proud of. I'm guessing, like me and like most of the people I know, you're working hard, you're trying really hard to make your business a success. And you often lose sight of just how hard you have worked and, and what you have done. I'd then like you to go back over that list again and ask yourself honestly, honestly, what worked, um, where are you getting customers from, or where have you managed to raise the profile of your business, your products and services, or where are those new connections coming from, or the referrals that you were hoping for, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Look at how well those activities, the things that you've done, have helped you to achieve your goals. Because then you'll find it much easier when you're starting to plan for the future. Let's face it, if you've been doing something for six months to a year and it hasn't made any difference, you might want to dial the, the volume down on that for a little while. It's possibly not going to be the best thing for you to do. So do your have done list and then that will help us later on when we start to build your SWOT. Now a SWOT is a handy snapshot. So you're going to have strengths and weaknesses. And these relate to how well you think you're doing or, or, or are actually doing. Um, weaknesses will be the things that create barriers for you, maybe what's holding you back. And those tend to come from either what's going on within your business or, or just outside of your business. So your customers, your marketplace, your competitors, relationships with suppliers, or even the supply of something that's key to your business. Um, you could be overly dependent on one supplier or of one supply, for example. Um, but also looking at those routes to market. You might be in a, a period of transition where you're taking something that you've delivered physically and looking at how you could deliver that virtually or online. So there's going to be a lot of things that you'd need to look at for that. Then your opportunities and threats will often come from the big wide world around you, that macro environment that I'll take you through in the next webinar in much more detail. But often uh, taking a much closer look at these things will help you to get a really clear sense of what's going to be happening in the next six months, 12 months, perhaps 18 months. What you can do to at least reduce a threat and possibly even turn it into an opportunity. Um, 
I, I don't think anybody would disagree if I said that 2016 had been a really eventful year. And one of the things that I found most interesting was how wrong the pundits were. All the analysts, all the predictions on both sides of the Atlantic and even across Europe were completely wrong. And yet those are what we were using as our guides, our decision-making principles. And yet they were completely wrong and they continue to be wrong. So sometimes what we need to do is to um, gain some additional perspectives on the world that our business or our organization operates within. And so I'll be giving you some strategies and, and some ways of managing that in the next webinar. But we'll look at how to develop a SWOT for your business. Okay, how do we make people or potential customers aware of what we make or do? So this is what in marketing we would probably relate to or refer to as brand awareness. Um, brand awareness would be that people don't know your business name, they perhaps don't know you personally, if you have a personal brand. Um, they, most importantly, don't know what you do. And they don't know why it's different. They don't know why it's special, better, much more suited to them. And so we'll look at ways at tackling low brand awareness and what we'll be looking at for that mostly is going to be the marketing mix, seven P's of marketing. If you're a manufacturer or producer, you're probably going to be most familiar with um, the, the first four, product, price, place, and promotion. If you're in a service industry, then you'll also be looking at people because they deliver the service. You'll be looking at process because that's how you manage the service delivery. You'll be looking at physical evidence as well because that's where the rubber hits the road. That's where your customers tell you whether or not it was a good experience. That can be in person, that can be online as well. And I think we all know that sometimes that online experience for us isn't very good. Um, we get very frustrated with some of the things that we need to achieve online. So we'll be looking at the seven Ps because you need to be managing all of those together in order to increase awareness and also to set yourself apart to differentiate yourself from your competitors. And then finally, we'll look at what the difference is between a marketing strategy and a marketing plan. So we'll be looking at that in each of the webinars, but we'll probably spend most time on it in the third webinar, brand awareness and the marketing mix. So what is the difference between a strategy and a plan? Well, I always use the analogy with clients that strategy is something like, I, I want to climb Everest in five years time. That's a strategy. Well, you need a strategy to achieve that goal. So the strategy to achieve that goal might be that um, you need to get significantly fitter. You're going to need the right equipment. You're going to need the right group of people to help you achieve that. Um, you're certainly going to need to go and get on a plane um, you're going to need to plan that excursion and you're probably going to have to find out an awful lot more about what is involved in climbing Everest. Your plan will help you to break it down into bite-sized chunks. So your plan might be what you're going to do in the next three to six months. It could be in the next three to six months um, I need to get fitter or I'm going to climb the, the three peaks in the UK just to see if I can actually get up a mountain. And then you take bite-sized chunks over the next period of time because your strategy helps you to identify when you will need key resources, key resources for your business. And often it's when you discover when you're going to need strategic partners for your business as well. So for example, if you work heavily in one industry, but you're very keen to diversify into another industry, you're an unknown quantity, but you might want to look at somebody who is already really successful in that sector, but doesn't do what you do. And you can do something that will help them and help them serve their customers better. And if you go into partnership with them, they will give you the entry into that new marketplace. So sometimes you're looking for strategic partners as well. So this is something that we'll come back to again and again throughout the webinar series. But if you have any questions related to today's webinar, please feel free to just drop me a line. 
I'm very happy to talk to people about marketing any day of the week. So a little bit of homework, a little bit of homework. So gently reflect back on 2016. Start to put together that have done list, looking at the things that you've done, all the activities you've done, what the outcome has been, perhaps even what you've generated or created as a result of it. You'll also be thinking about the kind of future you want for your business. Um, and even if it's to stay as a one person business, but perhaps just increase your income and get better customers. Sometimes it might be that you want to grow a big empire. You want to be really successful. Or if you're working for somebody else, that you want to grow your division or your department or your product line. You want it to be really, really successful. So think about what kind of future you want. And then when you would like it to start. You may not be ready for things to start now. This may not be something that you need to do in the near future. Um, you may still be working for somebody else and thinking of starting your own business, for example. Think about when you want it to start, because then that will give you a sense of when you need to have some of those foundation things in place. So the Marketing MOT continues with a, a series of free webinars so on January the 13th, we're going to look at competitor analysis and also those three marketing environments. They are really important, mostly because at, from time to time they become a bit toxic. And we all know that a toxic environment is not good for us, but it can also be not very good for your business or organisation as well. January the 27th, we'll look at how you tackle brand awareness, how you get better known, and we'll look at the marketing mix and how you manage that. And those are levers that you can pull. February the 10th, we'll look at improving turnover, profit and cash flow. We'll also look at pricing strategies and hopefully help you to answer that question, are you charging enough? And then on March the 10th, we'll look at time for marketing and top tech tools. So we'll look at how to build marketing into your everyday practice. Because, you know, really, a few minutes every day is far more effective than a splurge once every six months. Your customers and your prospects need to hear from you and about you on a regular basis because you never know when they'll be ready to buy. Te technology can really help you to manage your marketing and maybe schedule things to, to go out in a drip feed rather than a big splurge. Um, so we'll be looking at some of those tech tools. Now, there's a free ebook that accompanies this webinar series. Um, you should be able to access it from the, the login for this webinar. And I would very much encourage you to get in touch. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if we're not already connected on social media, if you're not already on my mailing list. So this is me. Um, my name is Joanne Dolezal. I have a Czech surname. I have a Czech husband. And in 1991, I moved to Prague where I set up my first business, TaylorMade Travel. I could do several webinars on my experiences of working in the Czech Republic in the 1990s, um, but I'd hate to bore you with all the details. But it was, it was wild. From time to time, it was pretty wild. But it taught me a lot about being in business. It taught me an awful lot about running a small business as well. Um, I worked in the travel industry for many years, about 16 years, until we moved to the northeast of England um, and I'm, I spent five years working in technology transfer, so I know the high tech sector quite well. Um, I studied marketing, um, I adore marketing and I'm also fortunate enough to be able to get in a room and teach marketing colleagues on a regular basis, which is an utter delight. Um, I've worked as a consultant for many years and um, helped a lot of clients to really get clear about what they're trying to achieve, but also to create plans that are feasible, that, that they can manage internally very, very easily. So if this is something that you're looking for help with, then please just drop me a line. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>